Hey everyone, it's me, X Canadensis. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I post a new doll related video almost every single day. And in today's video, I have four packages to unbox for you guys. There's no real theme. It's all kind of random. Um, but these are all just gen like things that I purchased. So two of the packages are actually from my friend, Dolls for Dessert, who's another doll content creator. He specifically focuses on doll history, specifically through prototypes, which is something that I'm also very interested in. So that's kind of how we met. And he sold me some of his prototypes. And then also two things, one that I bought on eBay and one that I bought on Mercari. So I'm just going to go through the pile in order. So this is actually something from Dolls for Dessert. It says bottom side on it, so I'm going to open it the way it's intended to. But I got to do that off camera a little bit because, you know, the top of a package will contain information that you don't want to get out there, right? <laughs> um, so there's two boxes from this person because the from, from Dolls for Dessert because the contents were in two different places. And I ordered these a while ago. Um, we just didn't ship them. It wasn't because he was being slow or anything. But he also said he was going to send gifts in here. So like, I know what one of the things is, but potentially there could be other things that I don't actually know what they are. So let's find out together, shall we? So um, it says, sorry, this took forever to be sent. Um, <laughs> um, which again, I don't really care. Um, this was actually at somebody else's house is the context for this. Anyway, so um, one of the things that was really cool actually is something that Dolls for Dessert doesn't personally collect, but something that I collect. This is something prototype material from Cave Club. Now this is extremely cool. So um, and I got a really good deal on this as well. I don't 100% remember what I paid, but I think it was like 40 or $50. But anyway, this is the first edition Emberly, but this is what's called like a test pilot, I think. Some kind of sample along the way. And by the way, the word prototype just means anything used in production. So if I sneezed on a tissue and used it in production in some capacity, it's kind of a prototype. Obviously, I'm exaggerating there, but that's why I use the word prototype. It's kind of a catch-all. But this more specifically would be a sample. So it's not necessarily like hand-painted or hand-sculpted thing. Uh, so what this is, is they used whatever plastic they had on hand. I believe they used different colors to represent different things so that for example I think this uh hand material is or I know this hand material is different from the rest so I think that's why they use different colors but if anybody involved in toy production has anything to chime in please let me know everything I know is from piecing it together myself or the few things that are available online for me to read so anyway as you can see we have Emberly we have her accessory which is her little club that turns into a little torch and that is actually super super cool and then we have the comb we have the shape of everything the packaging this was basically to test if they liked the way the packaging looked before they i guess had a chance to print everything and you'll see that they actually used cuts from the packaging for this barbie i guess so that kind of gives you a timeline of some sort i wonder what year this barbie is must have been 2019 if i had to guess but i don't know can't find the date on here it's probably cut off but Anyway, this is extremely, extremely cool. I was curious about the hair type, but I think it's the same. And I love, I uh, forgot that it's not feral because that was, I don't remember Emberly's dinosaur's name. Unfortunately, Cave Club went under, so I, I'm not super uh, caught up and like, well, I'm caught up obviously, but that was like two years ago when I was caught up. So I've lost some of it. So I don't remember the pet names. Anyway, we also have some other prototype materials also from Mattel. So we have this hat, whatever it is. Basically, Dolls for Dessert had some extra stuff and was like, do you want it? And I was like, yeah, I specifically wanted Emberly. And there's a few other things in here too that I was super interested in, such as what is in here. So um, perhaps the time has made me forget things. I definitely remember this. This is, uh, <laughs> um, through the, no, oh my god, Spring Unsprung. <laughs> Spring Unsprung Cedar from Ever After High. And as you can see, the doll is finished. Like, this isn't a hand-painted prototype or anything. Everything's stamped. It's normal. Except her accessories and her clothing are made out of different materials. So this is, if you can hear the train, I'm sorry. This is actually super common, and you'll find prototype materials... It's not obviously common because it's still prototype, but within the prototype world, these are kind of like chump change. They're everywhere. They'll use different types of fabric to test if they like the pattern and the fit of an outfit uh, in production. So obviously they tested the pattern and everything in-house, I mean, most likely, but then the like they make sure that they can do it in the factory, essentially, and that's where these sorts of samples come from generally. So um, I'm going to venture to guess this fabric is something to do with Wadonna Spider, but I actually don't recognize the fabric. Um, uh, I wonder. And then also the accessories are all 
just done in this red color and her tights are a different color so i thought that this was so cool and i specifically really did want this one because i really liked how the red looked i thought it was really interesting and yeah so this is just a it's not the same sort of test pilot as this emberly like this is definitely much earlier of a test pilot obviously but this one was clearly testing because they didn't have to test the body right like the bodies were done by this point forever after high of course because this doll came out in like I want to say 2014 and Ever After High came out in 2013. So prototyping for Ever After High was late 2011 into 2012, probably. If I had to guess, it could have been earlier. Most likely not. But yeah, she also has her ring. I don't know. So, so, so cool. And then again, I don't recall. I feel like these are the two that I purchased, but there's also an Astronova in here. And oh my gosh, she does not have the magnet. And there's some kind of writing here, probably indicating the magnet. She has blonde saran hair. This is just Barbie's saran hair. Uh, she actually seems to have, am I mistaken or is this her material? I don't know because I feel like sh hers isn't just one color, right? Like it has something else going on. Uh, and then her shoes and you can see that her body, it's the sculpt, but it's done in the wrong colors again because this is a test pilot and Astronova had a special body sculpt, of course, that was all new for her. But the head is done in the indigo color of the final Astronova doll. So uh, this one, I'm gonna have to ask about this. Again, this um, deal was struck a year ago, so I could just be mistaken, but I don't actually remember Astronova. But if this was a gift, thank you. <laughs> this is really cool. I love Astronova. I got her for my 16th birthday uh, and I was so, so excited. And I can't, I don't know how airports work exactly, but I wanted to bring my new dolls that I had gotten for my birthday to Disney because that we happened to go on a family trip that coincided like with my birthday uh, with my step family, well, my stepmom's family. And I, this doll has like a huge magnet in her head, but I got her through airport security twice. So I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, there's something in here maybe, or is this just, I think this is just stuffing, but there's like tape in there. <laughs> um, the last thing that I expected in this box is indeed in here. So this was actually a gift. I'm pretty sure. I think that um, my friend said that he would just throw it in, which is so, so kind. This is the white body from Trash and Alley. And if you know about my Trash and Alley collection, I technically have the most complete Trash and Alley collection in the world, I would think, because I actually have the only head that is known to exist. I'll show you guys, show you guys that in a second. Um, and the head actually goes to the white doll, but I didn't have the white doll's body. I now have the white doll's body, but she was missing her hands and she was also missing her outfit unfortunately this doll does not have the complete outfit this doll had some kind of like plastic i think it's like a blue and white striped thing but i could be mistaken and then of course she's also supposed to have shoes so uh, still missing the shoes and the top if anybody's selling that i have generous offers <laughs> let me know if you're selling it um like i'm serious i i, I also might be missing her tail i'd have to double yeah i'm missing her tail too which oh. Um, but they all kind of, they all have different tails, but like, I'd be fine with not having her exact tail. Um, but anyway, let me go get her head before we move on to another package. I'm going to go get her head because we have another prototype package, but I'm going to open it last. You have to stay till the end to find out what it is, or you can skip. I understand. <laughs> um, but let's put her head on her. I've returned with four rat dolls. So this is Trash and Alley. If you don't know what this is, it was a canceled line by Hasbro. The copyright date, oh, the tail came off. The copyright date for these was in 2018. I bought them back in 2020 when they showed up on AliExpress. It might've been late 2019. They arrived, no, it was in 2020 because they arrived like after COVID hit. I think I ordered them before COVID hit and then, you know, uh, so that was fun, but I don't quite remember. I have a video about them when I got them though, uh, but these are super, super cool. And I bought them basically as soon as I found out about them, but I didn't buy the white doll. And the reason was that the sellers knew that the white body was the most expensive. So you couldn't really find them in these lots anymore that just had the bodies. You could only find them in lots where the seller were, everyone was asking about the heads. Where are the heads? What do the heads look like? So the sellers were like, okay, let's just put heads on these and we can charge more. So they put Frightmare's Monster High heads on them, which look ridiculous. So you can see photos of that online. That's what that is. Uh, and <laughs> I was like, I'm not spending $30 just on principle. And now I feel like an idiot, um, but I'll pay a lot more than $30, a lot more. If you have the white body, or even if you just want to sell me the shoes and the top, you let me know. But anyway, um, yeah. So I have a partial white. It's so funny though, because I have the head. I have the only head. Uh, it's not known if any other heads actually exist. And I did speak to somebody who would have authority on that. And I'm not sure. The, the answer was inconclusive. Anyway, so these dolls don't actually have a neck joint, so you can just pull the head right off. Also, this tail is not trash and alley. But anyway, this was the body that I had. No hands, no clothes at all. But it does have cool writing on it from 2018 uh, from the factory. But anyway, now I have 
a new head or a new body for this head. Woohoo! Yay! So there we go. <laughs> we have a partially complete Verbena. If her name's Verbena, we know that from the tag. And also from confirmation I've received. But anyway, um, super cool. And the deal that was brokered to get me this head was actually facilitated by Dolls for Dessert, if I didn't say that in the other video. I feel like I did. Um, but anyway, yay! Super, super yeah. cool. So I'm so grateful to Dolls for the Dessert because, again, he gifted me this body because I bought the other stuff and he was just like, I want you to have the body. And I think this was maybe before I bought the head or around the same time I bought the head. I am so unbelievably grateful to him for this. This is so, so cool. I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity to purchase and I just don't remember about Astronova. Maybe she was one we threw in last second, but I was really, really excited about these as well. So I'm really, really grateful for the, um, that he had come to me to purchase these because I love prototype stuff too. Again, that's how we met. So not quite how we met. It's how we like became like friends kind of. Um, but we had met prior to that, I'm pretty sure. But um, I just love this sort of thing. I love to preserve the history of the dolls. I love just to have them because I find it so fascinating. And yeah, uh, so yay, Vermina. I'm so grateful. <laughs> I'm so, so grateful. Uh, but we have to keep this video moving along. So I'm going to open up the next package. So, well, the next package was actually the one from him, the other one, but we're not going to open that. So I bought more stuff from him more recently, actually. Um, anyway in this box. I already opened it just to make sure something was in here because it felt like actually empty. Okay. I was checking that something was in here and it was. So this was an eBay purchase. I think I paid like seven, what was it? I, you can you can search it if you really care, but it was like $10, like it was super, super cheap. But this is something that I've been specifically wanting for a long time. Oh no, <laughs> it's not in here. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, you guys. I got really scared because I opened it at the post office and I had seen this, which is the confirmation that what I purchased was in there. And then I opened it here and it's not there. It was, it fell out of the box. It was on the floor right below my desk. So we're good. Anyway, <laughs> if you've been following my hauls and my thrift hunts for the past like two, maybe three months, honestly, I have been talking about Barbie cats. I became really invested in researching Barbie cats through Dollect, which is an interactive doll directory website and also like a social media kind of uh, for doll collectors. It's totally free. I pay for it. I foot the bill. There's no ads or anything. I cannot possibly profit off of it. Um, and also it's in like the terms and conditions that I will not be profiting off of it. So uh, it's just, it's my gift to the doll community basically. But um, I did, I was doing research on Barbie cats for it because I was just curious about Barbie cats and I found a like pretty good list, but it wasn't exhaustive. So I really wanted to know how many Barbie cats exist and there is something coming of that soon on my channel. I needed one more thing to make the video in my eyes and I got it. So this is Tag Along Tiffy and this is one of Barbie's cats. I don't remember the year. I think it's 90s. Uh, maybe it says on the tag. I really hope so. 90, 1992. It could be a year or two off from that though. Uh, but look, so this is Tiffy and this is <laughs> one of Barbie's cats and the gimmick with this cat is that um, it actually moves so I think that it is not like truly electronic I think it just has wheels because let me show you there's a hairbrush and scissors here if you're wondering there's the there's the movie magic <laughs> killed for you uh anyway this cat is really really common actually you can get this cat any day for super cheap but I really wanted at least one accessory and that was the leash this is tag along Tiffy. Her entire gimmick is that you can walk around a leash. And yeah, I could just like make a leash, but I wanted the leash. Uh, and then I also started getting a little bit more greedy. And I also really wanted to have the magazine because it says cat magazine has a picture of Tiffy on it. It's just so funny. There's nothing inside. It's like a, you know, the old style Barbie magazines where it's just a piece of cardboard. But yeah, I needed it. So it was really cool that this lot came with it. And this was totally random, actually. I had just been to the thrift store and I got... She just happens to be here still. Mitzi Meow. Not necessarily at a thrift store, but at a, like, toy thrift store. But um, I really wanted Mitzi Meow, but uh, she was fairly cheap, but her gimmick is not that interesting. But I didn't really have videos on the internet of the gimmick, and I kind of needed that. So finding her in person was really convenient, and I'm going to have to put batteries in probably. But yeah, so this is Mitzi Meow. <laughs> um, and I was, like, looking up stuff about Mitzi Meow again, I think, because I had just gotten her. And I think I was trying to figure out, like, the electronics or something. I don't remember. I'm trying to find a manual. But I finally found Tagalong Tiffy. 
and I've been looking forever again and I just haven't been able to find her. Like ever since I first conceptualized this doll cat journey, I wanted to get Tiffy and I couldn't get her for like a price that I thought was acceptable and I was so frustrated by that. But anyway, um, I think the way it works is that you loop it around this little collar, which is why it's always missing. And then you just stick the collar on the cat. I'm gonna have to double check, but I think it's like this. And then your, your Barbie can walk the cat. And I guess we needed wheels for this. It can just be a plush that you drag. I mean, it's cute. I don't actually think it's electronic. I always thought that it did. So I've learned something, uh, which is good. But anyway, this is Tagalong Tiffy. And the way she was actually listed where I finally was able to get her was it was tag along Tiffy, all one word. And I got her. So I don't know how long this has been up. Oh, and you also get Whiskas brand cat food, um, which seems to be an actual cat food brand. But I feel like Whiskas doesn't still exist. But 1992, uh, this is in kind of bad condition, but the seller taped it up probably um, when they originally owned it, whoever originally owned it to keep it nice, which is cute. So I think this is everything, except I think there's a food bowl and there's other colors of the leashes, but I'm just, I just needed one. I just needed one and I got one. So I'm very happy. So can't go home the whole video without a Barbie cat, huh? We can't do it. <laughs> Secondhand haul, I should say. Anyway, so <laughs> stay tuned. Okay. This next box is from Mercari. Okay, I can tell you the full story of this because I don't have to gatekeep anymore because, well, whatever, it's fine. So there's a Little Mermaid doll that I got two dolls from the set recently, and I think it's called Tropical Splash. I got Tropical Splash, Alana, and, or, no, it wasn't Alana, right? It's Aquata and Arista, I think. I don't remember off the top of my head, but um, I got the two Tropical Splash Ariel Sisters dolls, and that line is Ariel, her two sisters, I think there's Eric or something in the line, I don't know. And one more. And her name, I think, is Kayla. Because that would pertain to this package. And she is super, super cool. I really want her. Uh, which is pretty expensive. You can find her for a good price, but you just have to get really lucky. Like, it's totally random. It's just whoever decides to list her that day. Because the other ones aren't really worth very much. So you can get her, like, new in box for, like, 40 bucks sometimes. And she's from the 90s. So it's pretty cool. She might... It's the 90s, right? Like, that's a late 90s doll, whatever. Uh, so I, I happened to just search her on Mercari on a whim just the day after I got that package. I was like, I wonder if I can get her. And this doll came up. This is a grail for me. Uh, I'm going to, uh, like, um, divert your attention to here. There. You see that? That's Mermaid Fantasy. I had... Oh, my God. This is, like, actually annoying. Sorry. The, the cardboard's scraping up against the table. I'm trying to point but like okay I had the pink I'm, I'm gonna stop with the gimmick I had the pink haired one when I was a child and she was one of my favorite dolls I still have her I absolutely love her and I managed to get Christy at a thrift store and then my friend sold me another one so I have three of Mermaid Fantasy Barbie and two of Mermaid Fantasy Christy and the one that I don't have is Kayla now you might know that that name is familiar because it's the name of the Little Mermaid that's the box from earlier um it's the name of that the Little Mermaid doll that I was referring to so, <laughs> um, I just happened to search Mermaid Fin or whatever the name was, Kayla, and she wasn't there, but Mermaid and Kayla on Mercari showed me the Kayla doll I was looking for. And she was $40, which that's kind of a lot of money for like a secondhand doll, but it depends on your perspective, right? She's complete. I've been looking for her forever. She sells for a lot more most of the time. And... Oh my god, I was just so happy. She was such a good price. I think I might have even put in an offer, to be honest, because I'm cheap. And I tend to do that. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> so here's Mermaid Fantasy Kayla with all of her stuff. So she isn't perfect. Like, she has... This is very, very common where the... Whatever this material is, I've just called silicone. Um, gets a little bit messed up. Because if you leave this doll sitting for a long time, you see that? That's exactly what happened. This doll was displayed sitting. Uh, and that's actually how I caused a little tear in my Christie that I got at the thrift store. And I kind of ruined my whole life. Kidding. But it was pretty annoying. But anyway. I have Kayla now. And the piece that I specifically really, really wanted was my childhood Barbie had these. And I remember them really clearly. But I thought they went to Fairytopia for some reason. And I think I actually still have them. But I don't know where they are. Um, I, I have one, I think, actually. But um, ever since I figured out that she's supposed to have that, I was like, okay, well, I really want that. Uh, and she, usually these dolls don't come with them because they're little arm sleeves. Like, you're not going to think to keep those. And she had them. So she does have some rubber band rot here, which I don't really care about. And anyway, she's perfect. 
She almost definitely was owned by a collector just because of her condition. Like, her hair is still perfect. She definitely seems like she was sitting on a shelf for a while uh, because of this. But she's, she was such a low price, and she's perfect to me. For my purposes, this is, like, perfect condition because I can clean up, like, that she's a little bit dirty, like, she's a little bit dusty. I can brush out the hair, maybe condition it if I feel so inclined. And then the tail is unfortunate. Like, obviously, I'd prefer a perfect tail, but um, it's not enough to, like, bother me that much. And also, I can glue the little tear. So, I finally got Mermaid Fantasy Kayla. And you know what that means? No, you don't. Um, Mermaid's Mermaid stands are basically the only stands that I can use with these because they're tall. Um, they came with the Winter Waves dolls, if you're wondering. If you have these dolls and you want them on a stand um, and you don't want to use like an ugly Kaiser stand or something, I, I have a vendetta against Kaiser stands, if you didn't know. I hate them. I just hate how they look. And they, ugh. anyway, um, Mermaid's Mermaid stands are perfect. Um, so I'm gonna have to evict one of my Mermaid's Mermaid dolls, but that's okay, because I have stands that work for them that don't work for these. And the reason for that is, like, I can't bend the tails on these, because any bending at all on display will cause one of those rips. You can bend them just fine when you're playing with them, but if you, like, have them sitting for a while, it will rip. So, you don't want to do that. So, Mermaid stand is getting taken away again. Whee! And if you're, a, if you're a mermaid enthusiast and you have a lot of doll mermaids, like the, um... Fairy to Mermaid Alina doll from Fairytopia. That's also what you're going to want to use. Mermaid stands. Perfect. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> now we've reached the point in the video. I'm just so excited about her. I love the orange and blue color scheme. Like Waterfire from My Little Pony. Obviously, I'm just saying that. It reminds me of that. Like, that's not the only thing. This doll came first. But um, it's just such a beautiful color scheme. And that was the toy that I had as a kid that had that color scheme. And I love it. So, anyway. Now I finally have the full Mermaid Fantasy set. And one of my first dolls ever was Mermaid Fantasy Barbie. I was born in 1999. These dolls came out in, I think, 98. I might be wrong. Somewhere in that, like, 98 to 2001 range. So, like, that was one of my first dolls ever. So, it's taken me my whole life <laughs> to complete the collection. And I finally did. Yay! And one of them was from a thrift store. That was crazy. And then my wonderful friend, who I'm actually meeting up with tomorrow, if nothing goes wrong. I'm so excited. Um, sold me the other two. So, anyway. A great time. Now it's time for what you've been waiting for, prototype box number two. I didn't show anything, by the way. That's a, that's a barcode for the box, but let's open this up. So there's something like mind-bogglingly cool in here, just so you know. Um, you'll see. I was, I'm so pumped about it. Um, and also, again, like a really, really fair price for what I got. There's a bunch of things in here. Ah, okay. three bubble wraps and one spoiler. Um, I'm gonna open this last because this is the, in my opinion, coolest thing ever. So starting off, V open. I was trying to do like French, but V open, I don't know. We open this one. And this, this is a G2, like test pilot of some sort. Uh, but what is cool about this one is that the dress is from an unreleased line. So this is an unreleased dress within like, Monster High prototype collecting spaces. This is relatively common. Like these dresses were actually produced, um, not not produced in like huge numbers, but they they're out there. Kind of like the Trash and Alley bodies. Like there's more than just one or two of them. There's there's quite a few. But I wanted this really really bad, and I always miss out every time someone's selling one. Anyway, for selling anything Monster High G two that was unreleased, I pay generously. I'm serious. Like please call me up something I don't remember what the line name was called Howlin' Hoodies is my specific goal this isn't Howlin' Hoodies but it's so cute and this goes to Venus so it's this really cute green and pink umbrellas situation and also I don't know if this body actually like came with this dress or what the deal is but it's one of the like super budget bodies but it is painted green uh and it's a Draculaura body as you can see by all the pink uh, and the green paint is chipping off and I think it looks cool and then also these shoes which I actually didn't know were in here I don't think they're related maybe they are I don't know but yay super cool I I really like monster hygiene too I know that's an opinion you're not allowed to have but I don't care I love it okay anyway within this one we have and that's, this is what the spoiler pertained to if you saw it this is a pilot body of some sort for the glowsome ghoulfish I think that's the line name uh, great scary Ray frankie doll i believe i have two of this doll i have one that was sent to me that i think is new, like has plenty of stuff and then one that is not very complete uh so i can put the head on this one at least um or i'll just display this as a prototype piece as it is i'm not sure um but this is really cool the material is all wrong it's super 
hollow and strange. I love that the neck bolts are see-through. So, so cool. And um, this, these are actually like broken because I think the material is like, it's not the material they actually use for the dolls. Like, do you hear it? It's weird, it's super hollow. Um, and these are also a little bit broken too, but this is some kind of pilot piece used in production. You can see like parts of how the build work. And then this is the tail, the rest of the tail. So it doesn't really like stick together super like permanently because it was just used to like show that the sculpt worked and we can proceed. So for example, this is really cool actually for how you would put this on is like how they would do it in the factory because you have to like loop it through this little thing to actually get it on. So let's do that. I'm so scared I'm gonna break it. There we go. Um, yeah. So really, really cool piece and I'm very grateful to have it. I really, really like the idea of like the eel mermaid. I always wanted an eel mermaid tail and I was always confused why they don't really make them. Some companies make them, but they're like, don't swim in it. And the reason is because like you need the, you're already sticking your legs together, which is dangerous enough, but the fin helps a little bit because it gives you more surface area to kick off the water. But with a, like a eel tail, no, you're not getting that because you don't have the muscles to move like an eel does and you don't have gills. I'm, I'm ruining the illusion a little bit. I'm, I'm, we don't have gills. <laughs> um, so, so you kind of, you know, <laughs> you don't want to have an eel tail, but I still want one. I still do. And I would happily swim in it. I'm not even a strong swimmer at all, if I'm being honest, but I just love mermaids. Anyway, the last thing. A lot of mermaid in this video, all of a sudden. The last thing is also related to Great Scary Reef. This is so cool. I'm so glad I caught this when it was for sale. Uh, I was kind of freaking out a bit. This is one of the original heads, like, pr proposed for Kala, Kala Marie from Great Scary Reef. So... Uh, if you don't know, this character is the uh, Kraken character. I'll show you a picture. Sorry, I just figured it would be better to, like, go get the doll. So this is Kala Marie. Uh, she's the daughter of the Kraken. She's the one of the most prominent new characters in the Great Scary Reef movie. And she she's really cool. She's a squid, like a giant squid because she's a Kraken. But the original design for her was actually going to be a spider crab. And she was meant to be a Japanese spider crab. And her name was... Kala, like, Kawasaki, I think. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, though, her hair is about the same. It's, it, I mean, it's the same color scheme anyway, and it's the same texture and everything. It actually looks like a big, um, oh, you know what? Ah, this could be pertinent to this, um, but it's, it kind of looks like a big tentacle. But anyway, the original, or this head used somewhere in production, and it could have been used anywhere. Like, I'm not asserting this is the original Kala head. It probably isn't. Uh, this is just a hand-painted prototype of some sort that seems to be related to Kala Marie somehow because it's on her. But it could just be that they were playing around. Like, you never know. Uh, but she has an afro, but it's in that similar shape where it's coming down the head a little bit. And the sides are shaved with this really cool pattern in there, which is sort of similar to what we saw going on in the um, prototype image. It's just that it had a different pattern. But yeah, I don't really know. But this head was so, so cool. I got a great deal. Her paint, like, I love hand-painted. And this is hand-painted, by the way. Like, it's really, really cool. Honestly, it looks like some pen was used, by the way. It looks... Oh, no, it's probably watercolor pencil if I... Yeah, that's what it looks like. Um, but this is just such an interesting piece. And this texture of hair, to my knowledge, was not used in Monster High Gen 1. I think... Um, Honey Swamp has, like, something different. Like, the, the curls are a bit larger in diameter i guess and these seem to be a lot smaller in diameter so really interesting i i love this doll's head so i'm definitely going to have to look out at thrift stores to see if i can find another Kala marie i don't think i or i saw one like once or twice i think but that was at like specifically like r vendors that were selling monster idols but i don't know she's amazing i'm in love she's gorgeous 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 and just look at the beautiful Pattern. And this could have been testing for another character and they just happened to use a Kala head. No idea. I do think that the um, the person I bought this from, Dolls for Dessert, did ask around and got some information on this head. I'll have to double check on that, but so, so cool. So, so cool. Excuse the train. The train's like, congrats! Congrats on the prototypes, Brooke! And I'm like, thank you, Trash and Alley. People love to try to mansplain Trash and Alley to me for some reason. <laughs> um, the train's like, actually... <laughs> 
It was an AliExpress. It was eBay. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Someone said that to me. Anyway, I'm like, I bought it off of AliExpress when it first came out. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, anyway, that is it for this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I'm really, really, really excited about all the things that I got, including, of course, the Kayla Mermaid Fantasy doll and the Tagalong Tiffy doll. Both of these are things that I've been looking for for a long time. This one about two months since I found out she existed. And this one for a long, long time. Seriously, I've been looking for this doll, like, where I've been actively searching to buy her since I found Christy, because both Christy and Kayla were very expensive for most of the time that I was conscious enough to be looking for them on eBay. So I was like, mm, I'm not really gonna try too hard. But then when I found Christy, I was like, well, I want Kayla. But it turned out Kayla was the rarer one, um, which I, I think it's because her orange and blue color scheme is so unusual uh, and like, it's so beautiful. So happy, happy, happy. Yay. And I, these are some of the best dolls ever made. And it, yes, it is because of this feature. That's all. <laughs> That's all I need. <laughs> Wrap it up like all other mermaid dolls. You gonna do this? No? Eh. Except mermaid sirens, if you come out, I'll, I'll give you that. Like, you'll be, you'll be better, at least temporarily. In my heart. Anyway, um, that is it for this video. I am so, so excited about all of these items that I have purchased. I did buy them from, well, I bought the prototype items specifically from private sellers, so, and also the prototypes, so there's only really one of the majority of them, except I guess this body, but I can't really tell you where to buy more because there's not really any available for sale right now. If there were, I would probably buy them. Um, they were purchased from private sellers, so, um, uh, yeah, that's your disclaimer. A, a private seller, my friend. Uh, but that's it. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I'd love to know. I don't know. What do you think? Also, did you buy anything interesting recently? Especially secondhand finds. I've been really finding cool stuff secondhand lately. I have a Japan haul that is so, so cool. And I'm so, so excited to show you guys uh, soon. Probably next week. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so, so much for watching for all this time. Bye.